So this is a 2005 Toyota Highlander. It's, uh, it's got a lot of noise in the rear end. I'm going to be replacing uh, strut here on the passenger side. The lug nuts there are 21 millimeter. Get that tire out of the way. Looks like the boss came in. I'm trying to make a video, woman. Get out of here. Throw some light on it here. So I'm showing right here this uh, sway bar link to the rear of the strut. You'll see there's two mounting points, one on top, one on bottom. It's not necessary to remove it from the strut. I'm going to put new sway bar links on it. So I'm just going to uh, remove it from the bottom. Over here is a speed sensor wire with a 10 millimeter bolt holding that in place. And then behind the strut is the uh, brake hose, which also has a bolt. I believe it was a 12 millimeter that held that in place. So those will have to be removed. The uh, two main bolts with nuts were 22 millimeters. You can see this vehicle is used. It, uh, I'm using a torch to remove that sway bar link. I've done this for 20 years. If you don't have a torch, you don't have to. You can use a wrench and a pair of vice grips to hold on to it so you can twist it. it. just It's a lot faster with a torch, and if you're good with a torch, I recommend doing it this way. But if this is your first time, definitely don't take a torch to your vehicle because it won't work out in your favor. Also, make sure you let that cool before you stick your hands back there. That stuff will stay hot for quite a period of time. So I'm removing the 10 millimeter bolt that holds that speed sensor wire in place. I can give it a little shock with the uh, air hammer just to loosen up the rust and the crud, knock that loose. This car is 200 and I think 28,000 miles on it. So this is the uh, 12 millimeter bolt that holds the brake hose in place. It's also attached to the back side of the strut. There's a little tab on the strut that protrudes with the nut welded in place. This is a step that you guys could skip. I decided to put new brakes on this while I had it apart and the brakes were down to nothing. So I'm pulling the caliper off the bracket and then I'll pull the bracket off and I'll end up removing the rotor. But you don't have to do this if you're just changing the rear struts on a Toyota Highlander. You can access everything with the brakes still attached. But if you are doing it, I believe it was a 14 millimeter for the uh, caliper bolts or caliper pins, and then I believe the bracket itself was a 17 millimeter. And you can see the pads right down to nothing there. Okay, the last two bolts are 22 millimeter. I put a wrench on one side and uh, hold the nut off. We're going to lower the car down here. We'll go up inside and disconnect the strut. So in the back of the car, you can see there on the right-hand side, there's a little access panel. Sorry about the poor lighting here. Pull that, open up that little uh, spot with a pick, and there's a 10 millimeter bolt hidden inside there. Pull that bolt off and that access panel comes right up. And inside there, there's going to be three nuts on top of the strut, and they're all 14 millimeter. The new strut will come with new nuts, so in case you drop one of these, it's not the end of the world. Pull those nuts out of there, and the only thing holding it in now is uh, corrosion and rust and dirt at this point. So I'm just going to stick a, put some light on the subject there. Stick a pry bar in there, and I'll get the strut pried loose. you got to be careful when you remove it because you don't want to snag one of those lines or wires and break something. Throw that out in the scrap pile. Pull our new one out of the box. These came from an uh, auto value, my local auto value store, and they're called quick struts or uh, assembled struts. I think they're around 140 bucks a piece, 150 bucks a piece, somewhere around there. Now this part of the video gets frustrating. Um, I really had to struggle with this strut because it did not want to go into place. If you do this, do what I'm doing right here. I'm just spreading those tabs out a little bit, that bracket where it mounts onto the steering knuckle. I should have spread it out more than I did because it doesn't line up quite right. If I was able to compress the strut, it would have fell right into place, but as, as you're going to watch here, it didn't. And it, This was the longest part of the video. I went out and got a big pry bar thinking I could pry down on the suspension, but the problem is, is the steering knuckle turned a little bit when you uh, when you arc the suspension down.
had this been a front drive uh, on a, or in the front of the vehicle, it wouldn't have been a problem because the, there's a bearing plate and the steering knuckle turned, so everything would have lined up. So I just had to work with it a little bit. In hindsight, I should have taken the strut back off the car and um, tapped on those brackets a little bit more with a hammer to spread them out just to just to ease an installation here. I tried a pry bar. I'm like, yeah. I suppose if I would have had a second person here, that also probably would have helped out a little bit. But I didn't because I worked by myself. So I got to come up with a way to do it on my own. You'll see here in a minute. What I ended up doing was uh, getting a very large pair of very large pair of over nine oversized channel locks and uh, as I pried it up I would use the channel locks to pull the strut into the knuckle. It took a little bit of work but eventually I got it close enough to where I could stick a screwdriver. I think it was a screwdriver or maybe it was a lady finger. Some sort of prying device because we all know screwdrivers are also pry bars uh, into one of the holes and, and once you get uh, one of the holes lined up you're golden you just wiggle it around the other one will line up. I think I started maybe the bottom hole first. And if you can get the bottom hole in, then all you got to do is, uh, yep, I put the lady finger in there. And uh, once you get the bottom hole lined up, just push in on the top and you'll see the top hole will line up. Makes it a little easier to install those bolts. This was literally the hardest part about the whole job, though, was just trying to get that new strut uh, back in place and lined up. You can see I got it. I got the bottom one in there, and then I'll end up pushing on it, or pushing on it, and then uh, get the top one in there. And the hard part is over with. Just tighten those down again. Those are 22 millimeter. Put in that little 10 millimeter uh, bolt for the uh, speed sensor wire there. Those only got to be hand snug. Those don't have to be tight. It's just a retaining bolt. And then there's a 12 millimeter bolt that holds the uh, brake hose onto the rear tab of the strut or the in, inside tab of the strut. It's easy to do, it's just at an awkward angle, strange position for it. Okay, on the back side here, I'm going to install the sway bar link, and the sway bar link nuts are 18 millimeter, and there's little flat spots uh, that you can grab onto with a wrench to hold the um, the stub from spinning, and those are also 18 millimeter. It was nice; I was able to get the gun in there. Typically, I'll use an 18 millimeter wrench and then an 18 millimeter uh, ratcheting wrench. Throw a little grease in those, because you know the oil change guys won't grease them. Back inside the car, the bolts lined up, so I'm just putting the 14 millimeter nuts on the uh, top of the strut, and we'll just tighten them down with the air ratchet or with the electric ratchet. They don't have to be super tight, just snug. And we'll put the cover back on, throw that 10 millimeter bolt back in it, and as far as the strut uh, R&R is concerned, it's done.